Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Just a closer walk with thee Granted Jesus is my plea Daily walking close to thee Let it be, dear Lord, let it be I
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey the commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless, before him in love. God destined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ. This was God's good pleasure and will. To the praise of God, glorious grace, freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of God's grace and lavishes. With all wisdom and insight, God has made it known to us the mystery of the divine will. According to God, good pleasure set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in Christ, things heavenly and things on earth. In Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things, according to the divine counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set hope on Christ might live for the praise of God and glory. In Christ, you also when had heard that word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of God's glory. Word of life, word of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples' preachings, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it's Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like the one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men to arrest John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to marry your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? The mother replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. The soldier went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. I have heard the saying before, and I'm sure you have as well, be careful what you wish for. I wonder sometimes if we think real hard about the things that we are wishing for, those dreams that we have, those wishful thinkings of what could be, rather than being comfortable with what is. The gospel passage that we have for today is extremely disturbing, and we have to acknowledge it. The relationships going on within Herod's family, the requests being made, none of this is comfortable. None of this is well settled, and it leaves us rightly feeling disturbed. Disturbed both for the intricacies of those folks that were in powers and places of leadership during Jesus' time. Disturbed for the realities of those who tried to speak out about the good news of Jesus Christ in this world and the ultimate price that they end up paying for it. Disturbed at the ease of how those folks that claim power abuse power. Like I said a few moments ago, I'm sure all of us have heard of that phrase before, be careful what you wish for. We could easily apply it to this passage of Scripture and think, well, did this girl know what she was asking for? Certainly, Herodias did. Did John the Baptist know what he was doing, proclaiming in which he did, calling the powers that be at that time to account for their actions publicly? to remind them that someone greater was coming into the world? Was John the Baptist being careful with his own words? When we ourselves wish for a golden era, when pews are filled, when churches are full, and when budgets are no longer concerns, are we, are we being careful for what we wish for? The proclamation of Jesus Christ has never been an easy thing for any of us who take it seriously. The life that we are all called to as members of the body of Christ together propels us to speak words of truth in places that are so incredibly difficult and in times where our own well-being and lives may be at risk. Are we being careful with what we are wishing for. You know, I've often found myself in situations where I've had conversations with folks and there seems to be this confusion between wishing for something and hoping for something. As people of faith, we need to remember that when we hope for something, we are hoping for something that is not yet seen. We are hoping in the promises of Jesus Christ that our Lord will be present in these moments of profound struggle, that our Lord will guide us into a new life that is filled with grace, mercy, and love, not just in some far time off, but here and now too. And yet, so often, so very often, it seems as though we get so caught up in the idea that these are things that we are wishing for, as if we're Mr. Bailey at the drugstore walking up to the lighter, hoping that when we hit it, it will light up just right and we'll get what we were hoping for, confusing our hopes with wishes. I can't count the number of times I've had conversations with folks that go out of their way to say, well, you know, the lottery is just at that right point. You know, it'll all work out. If I wish hard enough for something like that. But deep down inside, we know that that's not how it works, don't we? Deep down inside, we know that our lives don't operate that way. Our world doesn't operate that way. Our God doesn't operate that way. God doesn't invite us into 
a life in a world that's free of pain and suffering, discomfort and hard choices. No, God promises to be with us in the thick of it. That even when it seems like those folks that are doing what needs to be done, calling people to account for their actions, calling forth the reign of God in this world, that yes, yes, this world will take exception to it. Yes, there will be pain. Yes, there will be suffering. And then we, we get the opportunity to cling to a hope that amidst all of that, our Lord is still present with us. And that nothing, no power of this world, no force, no one in any position of leadership or authority in all of creation can separate us from the love of God that we have received through Christ Jesus. That for us is our hope. That for us is our good news. That even when things seem the bleakest, Christ will be standing next to us through all of it. Even when things seem the bleakest, Christ will be journeying beside us, reminding us that we are not alone. And that yes, things may be difficult. Yes, we might end up losing our head literally or figuratively in the process. But just because that happens doesn't mean we have been abandoned. Just because things seem tough doesn't mean God has left us. Just because we have fears and burdens on our hearts and minds doesn't mean God has left us. No, truly, Christ is with us every step of each journey, every moment of every day. And if we back up just a little bit in this passage we have before us today, we know that even when Herod heard about Jesus and the proclamation that was going on, this ruler this person in authority, this person who had the highest places in his own society was afraid that Jesus was going to take over the same work that John had before. And if that is what happens when the faithful witness occurs, if people in places of power who wield authority in less than caring ways are afraid of the good news, if they tremble at the thought that the proclamation of a life-saving, equality-embracing message can do that, then there certainly is nothing in this world that is outside the ability and the possibility of God's people when we remember that Christ is with us every step of the way, bringing forth opportunities for us to love and care, to draw folks into a relationship with God that remembers that God is at the center and not the earthly desires. Siblings in Christ, we have faith because of those who are faithful who have passed on this message before us and those of us who will cling on to that and know that Christ is motivating us to continue that proclamation into a new era in a new way, and in a new time. Thanks be to God. Amen. Listen, listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness, comfort and joy Listen, listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news. That he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting. Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world. 
in the triune name of God. Go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church. Lavish your wisdom upon us and redeem us from our faults, that by your witness all might praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Awesome creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of the powerful to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, comfort all who are survivors of violence. Guard the refugee and the immigrant and protect all those who are victims of prejudice, abuse, and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring forth healing, wholeness, and life to all who are hurting in body, mind, or spirit. Comfort those in mourning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you always. Enjoy it and share it. It is with deep gratitude from all of us at St. Paul and St. John and Emmanuel that we praise God for the offerings and the gifts that God has given us. And in turn, we return those gifts to the church for the ministry and the service that we all do for the betterment of the world. We let us thank God for our gifts and offerings. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and, and lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Oh Christ the same through all our stories pages our loves and
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.